This is the APSA Cape Epic. Spectacular Western Cape weather greeted the 608 teams at Mirandol Wine Estate for the prologue to the 2012 APSA Cape Epic. A rough, dusty 27-kilometer route around the Durbanville Hills threw 900 meters of climbing at the competitors. Defending champions Barry Stunder and Christoph Sauser of 361 Songo Specialized displayed their unquestioned credentials as race favorites. Starting last in the heat of the day, they caught the Bulls, who had set off two minutes ahead of them after just six kilometers. A fall by Stunder on the sketchy Contamans Kloof single track allowed the highly motivated Nedbank 360 life pair of Kevin Evans and David George to edge ahead by a second after 18 kilometers. And the South Africans powered up the unforgiving stairway to heaven climb to post the fastest time at that stage. However, Stunder and Sarza displayed characteristic determination in front of keen supporters on the ascent and crossed the line a mere 13 seconds faster than 360 life. World Marathon number one Austrian Alvin Lakata was the perfect guide for his epic rookie Swiss teammate Robert Menem of Topik Ergen as they clocked the third fastest time. Among the day's big losers were the three-time winners Carl Platt and Stefan Saam, with the latter clearly suffering as they lost time throughout the race. The Bulls pair finished nearly a minute and a half behind their support team of Boma and Ditch and over six minutes behind Stunder and Sauza. The multivan Marita pair of Hannes Genzer and Andres Kugler will also have to work hard to claw back time after finishing nearly seven and a half minutes off the lead. In the women's race, a combination of one of last year's winning team and the mixed winners, Britain Sally Bingham and Swiss star Esther Suss, were in a class of their own as they stormed through the field. Sharing the workload, they passed their rival teams at regular intervals to reach the hilltop finish over two minutes ahead of surprise second place finishers by Jen Breithaus of South Africa's <laughs> Theresa Ralph and German Nina Gasler. Mixed race favourites Eric and Ariane Kleinens of Contigo 28E lost nearly four minutes to a puncture and ended the day a minute and 12 seconds behind stage winners strongman Udo Bultz and Milena Landwig of Centurion Voda. A classy prologue performance once again by Stunder and Sauza, but a slender 13 second lead over Evans and George will ensure an exciting stage one. That and Sam of Team Bulls will have plenty of work to do. They're over six minutes adrift down in 10th. Bigham and Sus were stunning in the prologue ahead of the day's surprise package of by Jim Brighthouse. Eric and Ariane Kleinance or Rue, their mid-race mechanical, had left them a minute and 12 down on Bultz and Lantving. And in the Telcom Business Masters, Simon Fitz and Mai were impressive winners over the Jag Craft Fair, Brenchens and Vevers, surprisingly well off the pace. The evening's prize giving saw all the respective category leaders presented with the Craft Leaders jerseys, which they'll don for stage one. After the short, sharp prologue, stage one is a rude awakening for riders as they tackle a 115-kilometer route through the Robertson Valley. Three major climbs loom, the first littered with loose rocks and tilts to 25%, forcing riders to portage. Hangman's tree is short but brutal, and Tortoise Peak is 5Ks of slow poison. Keep an eye out for the wildlife. Three-time champions, the Bulls are six minutes down after a disappointing prologue and looking to make it up today. Well, can't say how the today. legs are today because yesterday was just a horrible day uh, last time and uh, yeah, but today is, a, is another day, new chance and the racing now starts and uh, yeah, I hope for a better day. The craft leaders' jerseys worn proudly at the start of stage one on the 2012 Absa Cape Epic by all the category winners at the prologue yesterday. Evans and George have a real chance at achieving their goal of the season with only a 13 second deficit and mere blink of an eye.
Well, I mean, I suppose as hungry as uh, anyone else is and as hungry as we've ever been. Um, you know, we just kind of want to get out there and get stuck in. But it's like I said today, a few mornings ago, it's the first time in, in a while that I've actually been excited for this race. And maybe having missed it last year, the excitement's built, has built up for me now. And uh, just looking forward to getting stuck in there. Uh, I mean, yeah, we go back a fair way and, um, you know, this is our fourth year riding together and, yeah, we know each other so well that we don't even have to talk on the bike anymore. We can just take a glance at each other and we know exactly what's going on and um, all the years the FX has been on, there's only two teams have actually finished on the overall podium as all South African teams and it was us in, in 2008 and it was Shan and Shark in 2004. So. Uh, I mean, it's nice to know that the country supports you, um, but I mean, in, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tough ask. Uh, we are up for it though, and you know, I think uh, all things being equal, I reckon this is going to be our year. Overcast conditions at Robertson see the yellow, rust, blue, green and red jerseys leave the start chute and roll gently along in the three kilometre neutral zone before the real racing begins. The riders snake out of the race village and into the streets that'll take them out of town. Telcom Business Masters leaders Nico Fitzenmayer and Rob Sim of Team Robert Daniel Momsen hold a comfortable lead over the Jag Foundation's Adrian Entoven and Delaney MP. Known for its fertile soils, lush vineyards alongside the Breda River, this is the first time Robertson has hosted the Absa Cape Epic as a start-finish town. They'll return after a loop of the valley and some brutal climbs and treacherous descents. A large group at the front of the field turn off the tarn onto the trails that'll stretch the field out as the racing heats up. The pretenders will be burnt off whilst the world's best step up the pace. In a pro-am event, dedicated amateurs are given a chance to ride the same trails and compare their efforts with those of the world's best. For many, this is far more painful than they imagined. Team Robert Daniel Momsen are well qualified to ride in the front group. But being as experienced as they are, they'll choose to back off a little for fear of overcooking themselves and paying dearly later in the race. In the front group, all the big names are present and correct. 361 Songo Specialized, 360 Life, Ravabank Giant, Topi Gurgun, Stockley Pro, Two Bulls Teams, Merida, Milka Track, DMC, and the second Songo Specialized team. Leading ladies team, Wheels for Life, Esther Sus, leading Sally Bingham on a bright yellow dual suspension 29er. Keen to extend their advantage and cement those rust jerseys on their shoulders. The spectacular Langeberg Mountains are covered in the early morning mist and tower over the field as they approach the first major climb of the day. Marked as a significant point in the race, the steep gradient and loose surface test technical skills as much as fitness. Team Stuckley are further down the leaderboard than they'd have liked after yesterday's result, but they're far better suited to long, hard marathon racing. They're at the head of affairs, driving hard. The road tilts up and loose rocks lie on the track, so traction is limited. Ulf Huber is forced to walk, and if the man in front gets off, they all have to. Team 360 Life are in the thick of it, keeping a close watch on 361 Songo Specialized. It's vital to stay as close to the front as possible. The Swedish champion Emil Lundgren performs a cyclocross move, wasting no time in his seamless remount. The pace had ripped the field apart with riders flailing in the wake of the relentless charge of Hoover and Stander. The young man from KwaZulu Natal looks far more comfortable than yesterday, completely in control as others follow him up this huge climb. Sauza looks back to assess the expressions of his rivals for signs of weakness. He likes what he sees because there's no sign of his chief rivals, the Bulls. Platt nurses his partner, Sam, who is still off the boil. He looks comfortable while Sam labors. Stunder pushes hard. He too is keen to see who's able to match his effort on the climb. At this level of racing, he's keeping a keen eye on his rivals, 
gathering useful intelligence for later, when tactics could dictate the outcome of the race. Matching in pedal for pedal are Tim Stuckley and 360 Life. Kevin Evans may not look comfortable, but what counts is that he's there with his partner, David George. The first team to the Telcom Business Hotspot wins 10,000 rands bonus. Not bad for a morning's work. And here's a challenge from Jacques Rousseau of Fed Group iTech Connect. He's a multiple national cross-country champion and now making a big comeback to competitive mountain biking after a seven-year hiatus. He surges on his super light carbon fiber bike, showing he still has the appetite for it as he crests the top on foot. With his partner Stuart deep in the pack, it looks good for Team 360 Life to take home the 10 grand. With George across the line, there are very few climbs in a race where you'll see Kevin Evans walk his bike to the top. Edwin Yonshuti, Rwanda's representative of the London Olympics, is having a good day out, mixing it with the world's top riders. Alexander Moos, the 39-year-old Swiss rider, makes sure he stays in contention, riding for Team BMC Mountain Biking. Alarmingly for the Bulls, Sam and Platt are further back, riding with Team Centurion Vorde, Kaufmann and Geismeyer. But it soon becomes a back-breaking push on the steep portage section for Sam. Stunder drives his advantage home. Only one team can stay. It's 360 Life. Team Stockley consolidate, and right with them is MTN Kuberka. Ditch and Boma have them in their sights, but riding the limit. They're just beyond reach. They'll have to wait for the descent. Things come together as the road tilts downwards, and the pack reforms after the carnage on the climb. One may ask what the point is of the front runners putting in such a hard effort that amounts to nothing. But in fact, in the poker game of competitive cycling, it's a way to force the opposition to show their hand. It's harvest time as grape pickers watch the biggest mountain bike stage race in the world pass by. All this would not be possible without the generous cooperation of the landowners and farmers in the region. Turning off the smooth, flat farm roads and onto the rougher dual tracks, riders need to turn up the concentration to avoid costly mistakes. Saza, George and Evans enjoy the more comfortable ride of their dual suspension bikes as the trails get rugged. It's not only their bodies that take less of a beating, it's their tyres too. And drama for Team BMC, a puncture. What a pity for Moors and Milatz, the German champion. Teamwork is critical in these situations, as it is on the bike. Oh, and tyre trouble here for George and Evans. It's George's rear tyre. All the top riders run tubeless tyres with 50 mils of sealant inside that usually repairs small leaks automatically. But for a larger hole that loses air too fast, it'll need a temporary plug, much like a car tyre. They're back on the road, but they'll have to use up valuable energy to chase back to the front. When riding on the limit like this, they'll be taking a few risks on the unknown tracks to make up lost time. Oh no, that's a plug not doing the trick. A devastating blow to the South Africans as the field heads down the road. They were 13 seconds down overnight. In stage racing terms, a blink of an eye where anything can happen. And it's happening right here. They're soon back on the bike and the chase continues with Team 360 Life looking ahead, hoping for a glimpse of their rivals up the road. George testing his rear wheel. Judging by the size and shape of this group, it seems Sauza has discouraged the others from taking advantage of 360 Life's misfortune, very sportsmanlike of the Swiss. This kind of honorable gesture is common in the close-knit world of pro cycling, where riders spend a large portion of the year together. One good deed is often repaid later, Flights are seldom forgiven. Evans and George are working their way through the field. With them now, riders who struggle to keep pace earlier. For the chasing pair, the water point at Tech Zone is like an oasis. Fuel for the body and supplies for the bike, like more air canisters, plugs, and possibly a wheel change. Also, the front group may take a little extra time and be slow to restart, allowing 360 Life some leeway. Their demeanor is very different from the front group. All business. No outside assistance is allowed, leaving the pair to perform all repairs alone.
Platt and Sam are back in the game again after a slow start. But just as they start getting comfortable, 361 Songo Specialized lays it down again, opening up a gap. Only Lakatra and Menon can follow. With the ways of Evans at George, 361 Songo Specialized will enjoy the peace of mind in having their Songo Specialized teammates, Knox and Yamamoto, handy to offer up a wheel or other parts if needed. A frantic chase of Rabobank Giant, the Bulls and Centurion Vode. Sam is slowly regaining the legs that took him to three Apps of Cape Epic titles. This never-say-die attitude held by him and Platt has no doubt been a major factor in their success. Saza, current World Marathon Champion and 2008 Cross Country Champion, has the bit between his teeth with former Under-23 World Champion Stunder and former Marathon World Champion Alban Lakata. Credit due to Robert Menon, who's holding his own in exalted company. Behind them, the Bulls, Stuckley, Multivan Marida and MTN Quebec are scrapping to stay in touch till their summit. Desperate times for Evans and George, clear to all, judging by the speed they catch and pass Songo Specialized. Max Knox can only sit and watch. This could be the move of the day, a surge from Souser and Stunder, leaving Team Topic Ergon in their wake. Oh, here we go again, the tyres of Evans and George are cursed. Platt stops to offer help, handing over a compressed air cartridge. The Bulls will remember Stage 7 in 2007 when Sam broke a pedal and George donated his before they rode themselves into yellow in Clenmont. The realisation seems to be dawning on George that their overall hopes are heading up the road. The 17 minute gap and counting. In the Telcom Business Masters, Nico Fitzenmeyer and Robert Sim and Robert Daniel Momsen were going about protecting their lead of 3 minutes and 56 seconds over Adrian Enthoven and Delaney Impey with typical efficiency. They linked up with Milatz and Moers who would overcome their earlier problems. They also had the company of the Westfall Columbia pair of Nico Bell and Javi Kombrink. The Jack Craft pair were not done though. Shan Wilson and Bass Peters on their wheels. In the mix, Ariane Kleinans and husband Eric were pushing for all they were worth. They had a disappointing prologue when they lost time due to a puncture, but today they were on fire. They'd started the day a minute and 12 down on Udo Boltz and Milena Landving are setting about regaining that time in no uncertain manner. Boltz is renowned as a hard man, a former top 10 finisher at the Tour de France. He won the Masters last year with Carsten Bresser. Ariane Kleinans has been the dominant rider in South Africa's marathon scene this season. A helping hand from Eric as they pushed hard. The rust-coloured jersey of Esther Suss she and Sally Bingham, the leaders of the women's category after going into today with a 2 minute and 19 second lead over Biogen Brighthouse. Both portaged over the top of the hotspot and it was down to business again. Sally, the triple British marathon champion, won the ladies title a year ago with Karim van Jarsveld. Esther won the mixed a year ago with Barty Bucher, is a former marathon world champion and proved her versatility in form by finishing fourth in the World Cup in Peter Maritzburg a week ago. Nina Gasler, former world rowing champion, has teamed up with Theresa Ralph from Johannesburg. They're the surprise packages of the women, they're in second place. Businesswoman and mother, Teresa's committed much of a year to performing well at the Absa Cape Epic this year and she's certainly doing just that. desperately keen to hold on to their second place by the end of today. Third place overnight, Yvonne Kraft and Elizabeth Brandau. Yvonne, of course, a former mixed champion here. Brandau committing herself to her first Absa Cape Epic and performing very, very well indeed, hanging on to third place. Back with the men's race, and it appeared 361 Songo Specialized had snapped the elastic. Something Sauser would have found confirmation of as he glanced over his shoulder. This was a true champion's performance. The chase group had some wildlife for company as they tried to pull back the gap on the flatter sections. 
Valti van Merida were there. As were Topi Gergen, but they had problems. Alban Lakata got something stuck in his derailleur. The clock was ticking. The Bulls 2 team of Dichen Burma, in the company of Stukli throws Lusa and Urs Huber. Dichen Burma so often playing second fiddle. Today was their chance to get on the podium. Urs Huber succumbing to the theme of the day. Tire trouble, but it was a minor problem. The multivan Marita pair of Genza and Kugler desperate to limit their losses. No losses up front though. It was Stunder and Sousa who were way ahead. Nearing the outskirts of Robertson, they no doubt could hear the finish. And then they were onto the field. A quite superb performance, consistency and mechanically trouble-free. Another brilliant ride from Christoph Sauza and Barry Sander, winners of Stage 1, a dominant performance. The chase for second place some five minutes back was won by Conny Lucia and Urs Huber of Stukli Pro with Bulls 2 in third place. In the APSA Winners' Lounge, evidence of another dry, dusty and hard day on the 2012 APSA Cape Epic. Whilst mechanical issues may have been the story of the day, Carl Platt and Stefan Sam did themselves proud by finishing in fourth place. A great fight back. Although but 12 minutes behind, this pair can never be ruled out of contention. There's still six days of riding to be done. A desperate day for 360 life. Evans and George rolled across the line, 24 minutes down. Another consummate performance by Stunder and Sousa, for whom this is the 22nd time on the top step in his Absecape Epic history. Shukli Pro confirming their status as the serious marathon contenders, and it's Sousa and Stunder back in yellow. From about halfway, it got really, really hot. You know, the climbs got steeper, and uh, <coughs> it just really became a race of attrition and looking after your bikes and equipment. And as we saw out there, you know, a lot of mechanicals, a lot of problems, and the teams that, that rode smoothly and steadily came out uh, at the front at the end. Yeah, it <laughs> feels very good, but for us it's also the time we make that's almost more important. Uh, it's, it's a good lead, but you have to take day by day, as I said before. Once again proving they're a real class act, Sousa and Stunder. Five minutes and eight seconds the gap back to Urs Huber and Connie Lucia. No change in the ladies, but Entoven and Impey won over Sim and Fitzenmine, the Telcom Business Masters, and the Kleinans couple were dominant in the mixed. After two days of racing, Sousa and Stunder have a 9 minute and 26 second lead, but 26 seconds separate places 2 to 4. Neon Schutte and Janse van Rensburg now in the African leader's jersey. Egerman Sus continue to ride in front in the ladies. Fitz and Mayan Sim likewise in the Masters, but now it's Kleinans and Kleinans who lead the mixed. Stage 2 is a 119 km showcase at the Klein Karoo. The route traverses the beautiful rolling jewel tracks through the stony yet beautiful region, passing through the charming village of McGregor. It's a geologist's paradise with remarkable sandstone shale formations, but there's a final section of steep, loose rises before the final descent back into Robertson. is the APSA Cape Epic.